The Ordinary Goalkeeper. I like that title. From the beginning, it captured the spirit of what you were going to tell. I'm going to talk about two things that I really liked about your speech, and then spend most of the evaluation talking about body language, because that's the subject of the speech. That's the goal that we have for that. The part that I like the most is your ability to tell stories, especially the second story. There was drama, there was emotion, there was resolution. You use beautiful language. I particularly like the everyday repetition, no matter if it's Christmas, every day. Your voice went loud, went soft. And then you had a resolution. So the content, the appropriateness, the emotion, the story, the level of detail that you pointed out, particularly in the second story, all worked very well. This is a really great strength. Stories are the meat of most speeches. You're there. Regarding content, I would say, good. You had an opening, two stories, and a closing. Very clear, I knew exactly, or, uh, organization, I meant, not content. Um, I knew exactly where you were. The opening could have been a lot more powerful. You simply came out and you said, I'm going to tell you about such and such. Take a part of your story and just begin dramatizing that part of your story and then say, I'm going to tell you. So begin with the kind of strength that you have as a storyteller at the beginning. Start with your good move and then begin to tell people what you have. So let's talk about body language and I want to give you a model of how to think about this. The first thing is what are you doing with your hands? The second is what are you doing with vertical space? And then what are you doing with horizontal space? So it's a three-dimensional model. If you're an engineer, you like this. I noticed at the beginning your hands were in your pockets, very tight, and then you ended up clasping. These are closed, isolating gestures. If you have your hands like this, you're inviting the audience to come in. If you have your hands like this, unless it's specifically for a purpose, you're saying, watch out, I want you away. You had gestures that were appropriate to the stories, so during the time that you were telling the stories and actually expressing something, I got the meaning. The rest of the time, I couldn't quite figure out what your hands were doing, how they tied to the speech, what you were doing. So if you were to look at your speech, cut out the audio, and just video where the hands are, watch yourself, and there will be a video of that. Ask yourself, what could I have done with my hands in that moment? Second, vertical space. Your range was probably about from here to here. There is this gesture. When you're talking about putting on braces, you can actually lean down and wrap your hands as if you had your hands around a child. Don't bend down like this because you break eye contact. Right? Horizontal space. A lot of sort of aimless walking without necessarily a tie to the speech. So at a minimum, think about the speech in terms of paragraphs. And then let a step be a transition from one paragraph to the next, and a big movement across the stage as from one section to the next. There are other ways to use the floor, but that's the simplest way to start and think about how to use the floor. When you're talking about a topic, don't move. Stand still. So thank you for the wonderful stories. And I wish you the best in coming up and using all of space and your hands.